Hi, I'm Vitek from Reef Factory and today I'm going to show you how to set up our thermal control. So, thermal control is a device for monitoring and controlling temperature in a marine aquarium. It controls heating and cooling systems, keeps temperature statistics and alerts users via Smart Reef app when the temperature exceeds a safe range. Let's start with unpacking the device. In the thermal control package you will find main unit with LCD display, power cable, magnet for resetting the device, fuses, mounting template, screws for hanging the device, velcro tape for mounting the display. The main unit includes power socket, heating system socket, cooling system socket, a diode that indicates the operation of the device, heating system operation indication LED, cooling system operation indication LED, LCD display, reset button and temperature sensor. Using supplied power cord, connect the device to the electrical outlet. Install the power cord into the tightly fitting socket, make sure the cord is not loose. The unit will start up and the LCD display will show current temperature detected by the sensor. Using double-sided velcro tape, fix the display in a convenient and spill-free location. Determine position of thermal control using template on the package cover and screw in the screws for mounting the device. In the next step, we place the temperature sensor firmly in the water, making sure it is fully submerged. Connect the heater to the power outlet. If the heater has a built-in thermostat, we need to set its temperature above the target temperature to always be in the on position. If you want to connect more than one heater, you can connect them through a power strip or an extension block, preferably without a switch, not to turn the heaters off accidentally. We can plug in a fan aimed at the water surface or a properly configured cooler to the cooling system socket. The maximum load of the device is 1000 watts. We can connect 1000 watts to the heating system and 1000 watts to the cooling system. The systems never switch on simultaneously. We may set up the device using a browser or a computer, laptop, tablet or a smartphone. We open the list of available devices on the Wi-Fi network select and connect to the network corresponding to the serial number of the device. The serial number can be found on packaging at the back of LCD display. The pattern of the serial number is an abbreviation of the company name, the device name and a string of 12 digits. A password is required to connect to the network. The default password is refactory all in lower case and no spaces. If while connecting to the device's Wi-Fi network, you see no internet access notification. Connect anyway. Using the same device, open a web browser and enter www.thermocontrol.io in the web address field. If such message appears on the screen, after you have entered the correct web address, it means that the connection to the device has not been established and that the connection to your home network is still active. Remember that during the direct connection to the device's Wi-Fi network and the initial configuration, your phone or computer will lose internet access. Configure the device in five easy steps. Step one, select the language you want to use when operating the device. Step two, configure the device parameters according to your aquarium needs. To modify operation and notification ranges, use the cursor key to grab orange dots and move them along the temperature scale. Orange dots represent ranges of programmed temperature beyond which either the heater or the cooling system will be activated. Red dots represent temperature ranges below and above which an alarm will sound and a notification will be sent to your mobile phone. The temperature may be displayed in either degrees Celsius or degrees Fahrenheit. The sound alarm may be turned on or off. 
For maximum safety of your aquarium, we recommend to keep the sound alarm turned on. The Smart Reef system will notify you when the safe range you have set is exceeded by sending a notification to your mobile device. Step 3. Connect the device to your home Wi-Fi network. Select the appropriate network and enter the password. When the thermal control device successfully connects to your Wi-Fi network, the IP address assigned to your device will appear in the left upper corner of the screen. This indicates that the connection has been successful. Step 4. Log into SmartReef by entering your login and password, or if you don't have one yet, select Create a free account. Step 5. Congratulations! The device setup process is complete. Click End to complete the setup process. Pay attention to the icons in the right upper corner of the screen. There should be green icons next to the Wi-Fi and Smart Reef icons indicating a valid connection. If a red exclamation mark appears next to either of them, it means that the device has lost connection with the Wi-Fi or Smart Reef system. From now on, you can control your device through the Smart Reef app or at www.refactory.com. Once setup is complete, remember to disconnect your mobile phone or tablet or computer from your device's Wi-Fi network and connect to your home network to restore internet access. If you have different temperature measuring devices with different accuracy, you can calibrate them. Please note that this feature is only available within the Smart Reef app. To calibrate, go to Smart Reef mobile application or log into your account on www.reefactory.com. Select thermal control from the list of your devices and click on it to go to the device details. Next, go to thermal control settings and select temperature calibration. Submerge the sensor in water at a known temperature. Wait 60 seconds and then press OK. Enter the temperature of the water to be displayed by the device. The calibration process has been successfully completed. After calibration, thermal control will display the adjusted temperature value and when you press the set button again, you will see the difference values measured after the calibration process. If this value appears, this means that the temperature value you entered is 0.8 degree higher than the value measured before calibration. Important, after the calibration process, remember to put the temperature sensor back in a secure way so that it cannot become displaced. It may happen that you forget the password to connect to the device or you want to reconfigure it. In such a case, you need to reset the device to the factory settings. To do this, you need to place the magnet provided in a set to the top of the thermal control device where the sticker with the word reset is located. Remember that after restoring the device to the factory settings, you have to configure it again and the device will maintain the default temperature range of 24 and 26 degrees Celsius. The fuses on the bottom of the device are there to protect it from damage in case of failure of the heating or cooling system. If the device indicates normal operation and the heating or cooling system is not working, it may be necessary to replace the fuse. To do this, disconnect the unit from the main supply, then turn the fuse holder according to the marking on it and replace it with a new one. To avoid the risk of permanent damage to the device, always use fuses with the same characteristics as the one you are replacing. The fuse on the left is for the heating system and the fuse on the right is for the cooling system. The two fuses are identical and can be used interchangeably. The middle fuse is placed slightly higher and protects the thermal control itself. Its parameters are different from the others and it cannot be used interchangeably with the others. The middle fuse is placed slightly higher and protects the thermal control itself. Its parameters are different from the others and it cannot be used interchangeably. If you don't have sufficient knowledge to judge for yourself whether a fuse is effective and needs to be replaced, please contact the nearest electrical appliance service in your area. 
This is everything in terms of thermal control configuration. If we still haven't answered all your questions, please contact our support team via email, support at refactory.com or use the support tab on www.refactory.com. If you found this video useful, leave us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more content. And join our Refactory family community on Facebook. See you around.